Hello everyone, and welcome to another tutorial for Sci-Fi Ship Controller. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how you can use the features of the physics space physics model to implement more physically realistic ship behavior. This tutorial follows on from the SSC Basics tutorial, so I recommend you go and watch that tutorial first if you haven't already. Throughout the SSC Basics tutorial, we looked at how you can set up a ship using the arcade physics model. For the vast majority of use cases, the arcade physics model will likely prove to be sufficient for your game. However, there are some circumstances where you may want to constrain your ship to a more realistic set of behaviours. For example, you may want to have your players fly an aeroplane that they control purely by aerodynamic devices such as ailerons and elevators, or you may be making a space sim where you want the ships to use a physically realistic flight model, with thrusters being used to turn the ship. In this case, you may want to try the physics based physics model instead of the arcade physics model. At this point, it is worth stressing that you should generally only use the physics based mode if you are certain that the arcade mode won't be sufficient for your game. While the physics based mode offers certain realism benefits, it is inherently more difficult to set up than the arcade mode. With that said, we'll start by looking at an example of a ship using a physics based setup. A good example can be found under SSM, Sci-Fi Ship Controller, Demos, Scenes, Explorer Physics Demo. If I select the Explorer ship, you can start to immediately notice some of the differences from the arcade setup used in the SSC Basics tutorial. For instance, in the Physics tab, there are no longer any pitch, roll and yaw accelerations that we can set. This is one of the key differences between arcade and physics based mode. While in arcade mode, turning is achieved using the pitch, roll and yaw accelerations, in physics based mode, turning is achieved using either thrusters or control surfaces. As you can see from the number of pink arrows in the scene view, the explorer ship has quite a lot of thrusters attached to it. These thrusters are positioned to allow them to turn the ship. If we go into the thrusters tab, we can see that as well as the thrust input parameter we saw in the SSC basics tutorial, we now have two moment input parameters, as now turning inputs can also be used to activate the thrusters. A moment is just another word for a torque or a turning force. The moment input parameters work in a similar way to the thrust input parameter. When a turning input on that axis is sent to the ship, that thruster will activate. Two moment inputs are provided, as you will often have thrusters that can provide a turning force on more than one axis. As with the thruster input parameter, the auto populate forces and moments button can be used to calculate a good first guess for the thrust and moment inputs. A key point to thruster setup in physics based mode is the positioning of the center of mass. If you go into the physics tab, you can change where the center of the mass of the ship is by enabling set COM manually. It's important to be able to set the center of mass as you'll be positioning thrusters relative to the center of mass instead of relative to the center of the ship. Now let's have a look at a simplified example for setting up thrusters. Here I've got a ship only set up for turning left and right, with just four thrusters configured. When I want to turn left, the front right and back left thrusters will activate, and when I want to turn right, the front left and back right thrusters will activate. To make sure that the ship will turn as expected, there are a few guidelines that you should follow when setting up your thrusters. Firstly, any thrusters for turning need to be positioned symmetrically with respect to the center of mass. For example, if we look at the thrusters I have configured here, the front turning thrusters are 4 meters in front of the center of mass, and the back thrusters are 4 meters behind the center of mass. Similarly, the left thrusters are 1 meter to the left of the center of mass, while the right thrusters are 1 meter to the right of the center of mass. As well as this, all of the thrusters are at the same height as the center of mass, with a Y value of 0. A key point to remember about positioning is that if you have an effects object for a thruster, it doesn't have to be placed in the exact same position as the thruster. While the thrusters themselves should be positioned symmetrically, the graphical representations both on your model and in the effects objects don't have to be in the same positions. Secondly, the thrusters used for turning on a particular axis also need to have the same max thrust value. For example, all of my thrusters that I have here are going to be used for your input, so they all have a max thrust value of 250 kilonewtons. 
Here's another simplified example of thruster setup. For this ship, instead of thrusters for yaw, I've set up thrusters for pitch and roll. While there are more thrusters than there were before, the same principles still apply. As from before, I've set all the thrusters to have the same max thrust value. For these thrusters, it's set to 100. The thrusters are positioned so that they are symmetrical about the centre of mass. If you combine the thrusters from both of the simplified setups we've looked at, you get a set of thrusters similar to the physics-based Explorer ship, with thrusters that can handle pitch, roll and yaw. If you're going to use the physics-based model for your ship, the thruster setup of the physics-based Explorer ship can serve as a good starting point. As a final note on thruster setup, as well as thrusters for turning, you'll also generally want to have your usual thrusters that you use for normal movement, similar to the thrusters you would use in arcade mode. When you use the auto-populate forces and moments button, if these thrusters are offset from the center of mass, often they will be assigned a primary and or secondary moment input. If your intention for the thruster is simply to use it for movement and not for turning, you should set the primary and secondary moment inputs to none after clicking the auto-populate forces and moments button. If we go into the control tab, we can see a few new properties have appeared that aren't present in arcade mode. The first, translational fly assist, has a similar effect to the flight turn acceleration parameter in arcade mode. Like flight turn acceleration, it will help to slow down movement of the ship that isn't in the forwards direction, preventing drifting behavior. The main difference is that the translational fly assist will send inputs to the thrusters to achieve this, so how effective the translational fly assist is will it depend on how much power you have given the relevant thrusters of your ship. The pitch, roll and yaw power properties are similar to the pitch, roll and yaw acceleration properties in arcade mode. They control how quickly the ship turns in response to input on each axis. A value of 1 means that all the power of the relevant thrusters will be used to turn the ship, while a value of 0.5 means that half the power of the relevant thrusters will be used to turn the ship. Generally, you should set the thrust of each of your thrusters so that movement is as you want it to be, then adjust the pitch, roll and your power so that the turning speed matches what you want. In the real world, thrusters are not the only way to steer a ship. A good example is an aeroplane. Instead of being turned by thrust inputs, Aeroplanes have aerodynamic devices such as ailerons and rudders that they adjust to steer the aircraft, providing that it is flying through some sort of atmosphere. In Sci-Fi Ship Controller, you can achieve similar effects using the AeroTab. You can see these in action by going to the Jet Airliner demo, which you can find by going to SESM, Sci-Fi Ship Controller, Demos, Scenes, Jet Airliner Demo. If I select the Jet Airliner ship, we can see a number of yellow and blue gizmos show up in the scene view. The blue gizmos correspond to wings, while the yellow gizmos correspond to control surfaces. Just like thrusters, wings and control surfaces can be edited in the scene view. In addition to moving and sometimes rotating them, they can also be resized using the scale tool. As mentioned previously, wings and control surfaces only have an effect on the ship when the ship is moving within an atmosphere. In Sci-Fi Ship Controller, this corresponds to the medium density value in the Aero tab being larger than zero. The default value of 1.293 is the value for Earth's atmosphere. Wings are aerodynamic devices that are used to generate lift, keeping a plane in the air by opposing the force of gravity. They are available in both arcade and physics-based mode. Each wing has five parameters that can be changed. The angle of attack, is the angle that the wing is inclined at. Increasing the angle allows the wing to generate more lift, but higher angles make it easier for the wing to go into stall. Stall generally occurs when the pilot of a plane pitches up too quickly. When this happens, the wings stop generating lift and gravity pulls the plane back to the ground rapidly. You can alter how much stall affects the plane by changing the wing's stall effect parameter. Reducing the value will make it harder for the plane to go into stall. Length and width determine the area of the wing, which can be seen visually in the scene view by the rectangle. The larger the area of the wing, the greater the lift force it will produce. The ratio of length to width also affects how much drag the wing has. 
To reduce the effect of induced drag on the wing, reduce the width of the wing. Relative position determines where the control surface is relative to the pivot point of the ship. In general, wings should be set up symmetrically with respect to the left and right sides of the ship. For example, on this aeroplane, there are two wings, one on the right and one on the left, both the same distance from the center of mass. The lift direction parameter controls which way the force of lift generated by the wing acts on the plane. It is indicated by the blue arrow in the scene view and can also be modified by selecting the wing and using the rotate tool. Generally, you should leave this at its default upwards value. Control surfaces are aerodynamic devices that can be used to turn or slow down the ship. They are only available in physics-based mode. Each control surface has four parameters that can be changed. Type determines what the control surface does, which we'll get to in a moment. Length and width determine the area of the control surface, which can be seen visually in the scene view. The area of the control surface affects how powerful the control surface is. A larger area will mean that the control surface has more effect when it is activated. Relative position determines where the control surface is relative to the pivot point of the ship. There are four types of control surfaces. The first type of control surface is the aileron. Ailerons are used for controlling the roll of the ship. To work effectively, there needs to be an aileron on both the left and right sides of the ship, positioned symmetrically. On this aeroplane, the ailerons are the flat control surfaces positioned on the wings here and here. The second type of control surface is the elevator. Elevators are used for controlling the pitch of the ship. To work effectively, the elevators need to be set up symmetrically. Unlike the ailerons, however, there doesn't need to be separate elevators on the left and right sides of the ship for them to work. For example, on this aeroplane, there is only one elevator which is positioned just below the tail fin right here. The third type of control surface is the rudder. Rudders are used for controlling the yaw of the ship. Like elevators, to work effectively, the rudders need to be set up symmetrically. Typically, there generally will be just one rudder positioned along the center and towards the back of the ship. You can see an example of this on this aeroplane, where the rudder is positioned in the tail fin at this position. The fourth and final type of control surface is the air brake. Air brakes are used for slowing down the ship. Like elevators and rudders, to work effectively, the air brakes need to be set up symmetrically. On this aeroplane, the air brakes are the large control surfaces positioned on the wings, here and here. One final thing to keep in mind for control surfaces is that the Y value of the relative position of the control surface should generally be kept as close to the Y value of the position of the center of mass as possible. This isn't super important, but if you're experiencing strange behavior with your control surfaces, try moving them closer to the center of mass and see if that helps. That's it for this tutorial. If you have any questions about sci-fi ship controller, you can contact